its body other than the face itself. There are in fact four different types of, uh, you know, what we think of as Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Very wide, pronounced nose. There was also a very ominous uh, odor. Phase one is to identify opportunities. I walked into a small clearing uh, and less than 10, 15 feet away from uh, this enormous creature and uh, it scared the living hell out of me. Phase two is conducting investigations both of witnesses and locations. The size of the thing, it was, you know, four or five feet across the shoulders. Phase three is profiling research areas, what's there, how they move, feeding, things like that. About eight feet tall, I guessed around 800 pounds, it was massive. I had no idea that anything like that existed. Phase four is create an intercept plan. I decided to shoot in the air to see if maybe it would scare it off. Phase five is the intercept and resolve the issue phase. It didn't do anything, didn't react. And then I heard a noise from my right rear and from out behind some brush come another one and walked over by the first one. That's when I decided to do what the dog did. I took off running. Welcome to Witness of the Unknown. Hello everyone. The witness I'm speaking to today wishes to remain anonymous uh, and also for the location. So, how are you today? Pretty good. Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good. Been a long busy day, but uh, always good to talk with people. So, what I'm going to do is just let you tell me, you know, from the beginning you know, what happened and, and how the situation unfolded. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as I, as I said before, if I, I start to get a little off subject, it's uh, <laughs> just because uh, a lot has gone through my head since then. But uh, give you a little bit of a background on uh, the two of us. It was actually two of us that experienced this. Um, I was an Army sniper. Um, two and a half years in pretty heavy combat. Uh, and the fella I was with, uh, he was a former Green Beret, uh, working in the same, you know, both of us work in the same capacities together. And, and you can kind of say we're, we're, uh, from that very minute fraction of a 1% of, uh, you know, those that been in the military. So, sure. I, um, was, I was a 19 Delta myself. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good friend of mine. He was a, a 19, a 19 series somewhere, but mm -hmm. then he, then he decided to get straight and went 11 Bravo. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. Cavalrymen are pretty crazy. So <laughs> you yeah, gotta, you got to get yeah. out of it sometime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, um, no, we were, uh, both of us were very, uh, very successful at, at our, at our, uh, you know, expertise or what have you. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyways, we were up, uh, in the Cascades, Southwestern Oregon. Um, uh, I would say North of Crater Lake, okay. uh, kind of, you know, right, right in the Cascades, uh, up, you know, it, yeah. But, um, kind I, I'm just of, not, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just not too uh, keen on on uh, giving out a location because, uh, quite frankly, I, you know, I just uh, kind of, you know, keep the yahoos out of there. So exactly. Um, but, anyways, uh, we were looking for some uh, remote areas to go fly fishing, and uh, we just kind of got on our uh, topo map and um, started looking for blue lines and. And, you know, 
which areas seem the the least likely to be traveled upon and mm-hmm. uh we found we found this area um it it looked like it was uh out there a ways in between some uh mountains so we drove in and it's just four service road and we drove in and we found the the pond. It was more of a pond, really. But we found it and and uh, tried our hand at casting. But the brush was real thick, and you know, there's a lot of old growth in the area too, and and some reprod and you know, things like that. So uh, there was an established elk camp. This was this was in June, uh, early June actually. So that high up. Uh, the snow really hadn't been gone very long at all. So, uh, so after trying to fish this area, I realized it, it was just it wasn't going to be uh, productive. So, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of knuckle draggers, we decided to go explore. You know, go track some game or something like that. And uh, so, looking around um, the area, I don't know. Did you have a chance to look at the map? Yeah, I I haven't yet. No. Okay. All right. It's uh, be really good how to explain it is. Uh, this pond was formed by the road itself. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're standing facing north, right where this this kind of a dam uh, that formed the pond, uh, to the right would be the pond, and to the left a draw or small. Yeah, just uh, it's a small draw, um, relatively flat area but it climbs up pretty good on both sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, and off to the left, below the pond, uh, is kind of a marsh area where you, know, you can see the stream pop out here and there. And, uh, you know, with the, the topography rising uh, to the north and the south of this uh, pond and, and the marsh area, we decided to just kind of explore around a little bit, and uh, we found... Uh, we found a lot of elk tracks, uh, just tons of them, fresh and old. It, it, this was, I mean, it was like a highway. It was an area for them to travel through and migrate. And uh, we started walking out following these tracks. It's like, wow, my buddy found this uh, femoral bone, I think, from an elk that had teeth marks on it. And a lot of times when you get out in the woods, uh, you find uh, bones, they've been chewed on, you know, for, uh, for the marrow. Sure. Because things just don't, they don't last very long out there. And, uh, anyways, he found these bones with like flat teeth marks on it and everything. And he's like, well, this is this, you know, look pretty cool. But, uh, we started walking, uh, following this, uh, these elk tracks a little further. And what we were walking on was like, uh, a little bit of a plateau area. This um, it, it was a section, almost like a lane traveling east to west uh, on the south side of this marsh area, and we were traveling uh, west on it. And they had left some old growth timber and allowed these trees to kind of uh, uh, reseed the area naturally, and that's what was popping up around them. But it was a pretty pumicey, you know, that kind of high cascades kind of ground. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so walking out, you know, my buddy was like, hey, look at these trees and, and started looking. I was like, yeah, that's kind of funny. You know, that's uh, I didn't really think much of it because uh, there's a lot of snowfall up there, sometimes, you know, 20 feet during the winter. Mm-hmm. And it could bend trees over, things like that. But uh it seemed kind of, uh, you know, hindsight 2020 seemed pretty uh, isolated in that spot. But uh, were they bent either here or nor broken? There. No, they were just bent over, and that's, um, mm-hmm. you know, he he had a bit more of imagination than than I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I just kind of laughed at him, and, and he was from out of state visiting, so. Uh, he wasn't quite familiar with the terrain and and um, everything here. So, anyways, uh, we made kind of a, a big loop around, and then as we were headed back, 
uh, you know, the wood's really quiet. And for spring up there, that it just doesn't seem quite right. You know, it's, uh, it's you know, everything's coming alive and, and feeding and, and getting ready for nesting and everything. But this area is pretty quiet. And uh, uh, walking back, uh, we were kind of, we we're just within sight of each other, kind of just following tracks. And I like to follow game tracks and just kind of figure out their mannerisms or what have you. And, uh, uh, okay, I got to work on my breathing. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, Take your time. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it gets, um, but anyways, uh, as we were walking back to the Forest Service Road, uh, I noticed that I um, I wasn't belly breathing. I do a lot of belly breathing just because of a lot of experiences I've had with the military. Uh, you know, there, there's some residual memories or what have you and feelings with anxiety or PTSD, what have you. Mm-hmm. But and it's uh, it's just very natural for me now to uh, breathe lower in my belly as opposed to the chest, and because the chest area when you breathe there it's more instinctive, uh, reactive. You're getting prepared for something, mm-hmm. and uh, I was breathing in my chest, and we just kept walking and. You know, I, I by the time I'd noticed I was breathing in my chest, I was uh, every every few steps I just stop and look around, and this was something that I really wasn't aware of. And I thought, okay, Rusty, you're not you're not uh, uh, crawling around the brush in some foreign country or what have you. But anyways, um, I realized that I, I was I was scared. I was scared shitless um you know i i've been in situations in combat that you know you just take it with stride i mean Mm -hmm. been been stalked hunted shot at tried to blow up you know incoming uh you name it drive down roads that that uh you know other units weren't going to because i i just you know um Think of any kind of organized chaos in combat, and I'd probably done it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, I had such a deep fear. Just, I had never, uh, just something like this, I'd never felt before. And I grew up as a kid, uh, right up, right up into my teens on the coast, um, uh, just west of here on the coast, and my family had a huge ranch, and we had a lot of wild critters out there too. And uh, it was right, right in that coastal range, you know, real rough terrain, and and uh, I'd I'd run into cougars. I mean, that's just you, you just kind of learn to keep your head on a swivel and and carry a firearm with you. Uh, bear, you know, we'd had bear come in and you know, just some really nasty boars kill sheep and things like that. And uh, dealt with it all, walk into the barn and, and uh, lo and behold, there's a cub in there playing, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you, you get used to those feelings. Uh, right. you know, as a kid, I was walking down the road, um, uh, at night and, uh, my, my dog, uh, she kind of figured something was going on and, my mag light was run out of batteries at the time and looked up and, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a cougar in the road staring at us. Uh, you know, things like that. I, I have experienced those. Um, this was nothing like that. It was just a deep, ingrained fear. And uh, by the time we got to that road, I as I said, I was, I was looking, I was doing a full 360 and I had no firearm. I was, <laughs> I, you know, other than tugging on Superman's ca- uh, cape, I was, I was just in the wind there. And, uh, <laughs> well, you were fishing, I had no, you know. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, after this, I, I got a pretty beefy pistol and I'm still looking for bigger rounds for it. But, um, Anyways, um, 
Yeah, and I, I um, uh, Jack, he came out on the road uh, just uh, just north of me because we weren't too far out of sight. And as we were walking, uh, we realized that, and I looked at him, and he's he's scared out of his wits too. And it was just a look of we cannot be aware enough of what's going on around us. Yeah, but we just, I mean, it took everything not to get up and run. Maybe maybe it was some of my just uh, growing growing up in in wilderness areas and stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's like last thing you do is start running. It it took every ounce out of both of us just not to get up and start bolting towards the pickup. And uh, we felt this until we got out of that plateau area with uh, the uh, uh, natural reprod uh, where the that elk highway I call it uh, was. Uh, once once we got out of there, then it started to subside a little bit. Oh, excuse me. I'm burping a little bit. My stomach's kind of twisted up now. Um, no worries. But uh, we we walked. Uh, we headed north on the uh, four service road, and we got to the spot where that road makes the dam. And uh, we could kind of start to breathe a little bit and we're, we're kind of, we're, we're still, our heads are on a swivel. We're closer together, but kind of getting out into that open area. Now we could start to talk and there wasn't any words, uh, not much between us at that point. We, we knew by the look in our eyes that we were both, uh, just, just scared out of our wits and, uh, you know, see it look in his eyes too. I'm, kind of trembling right now but um you know of course we talked we talked more about it later on the crazy thing was um i you know before this whole thing i used to joke before moving back to oregon i'm like yeah i'm moving back to the the state with all the the most uh alien abductions and bigfoot sightings you know kind of just a joke mm-hmm. you know um I, I really didn't give any thought about it kind of joked about it for the most most uh most part and when we got to this spot where the road builds the dam uh from that that little plateau uh now we're, we're now looking out over the marsh towards uh, westerly direction, and that area we'd walked was just the south of that, uh, it sounded like something had picked up two big rocks and just smashed them together three times. And um, we listened to this, and I'm fumbling around, and it's like, I just... So I'd like to get some sound or something. I mean, this, I just, I I knew this is not normal. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't know any animal, uh, you know, that I currently knew of at the time uh, that could pick up two big rocks and just smash them together three times. Um, And then my buddy Jack, uh, he's like, whoa, that's, that's well in in a uh, few words or less he used saying it was pretty crazy mm-hmm. so he picks up like some he's fumbling around and he picks up uh i think a couple of sticks and smacks them together and just after that it sounded uh well you've heard machine gun fire before right um you know besides that uh that sonic impact and the crack of it uh, flying over your head, mm-hmm. that was the only thing that was missing. It sounded like something had picked up two logs and proceeded to just, you know, repetitively hit a tree, the side of a tree. And it was loud enough to sound like gunfire, rapid gunfire. And um, several times it was like, digga, 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 digga. and, um, and then there was nothing, and we're we're standing there, you know, uh, just shy shy of uh, wetting our pants at that point. Well, I won't speak for Jack. I, you know, I'm only speaking for myself. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, I mean, 
Well, we had no, we just, we did, yeah, no, nothing to reference to. Now, Jack, before traveling over, he had, uh, he, he likes to research an area before he goes out and explore and stuff, and, and, you know, his eyes kind of lit up, and he's like, dude, I, I looked into this area, and there's like tons of Bigfoot sightings and stuff, and he's like, you kidding me? And then, of course, my brain started working. It was like, well, that's kind of crazy, you know, something picking up two huge rocks. So I, I, uh, we just, we went back to the pickup and got the hell out of there. That's, that was it. And, um, and we started talking about it afterwards. And of course his imaginations, you know, going crazy and everything. But, um, yeah, no, that was kind of the end of it. Uh, we drove out there the following day, uh, snow level dropped and, um, snow level dropped. Uh, we didn't walk out to that area. I, I wasn't going to anyways, but, um, we kind of drove past that and further up the mountain a little ways and, and, uh, do some exploring. And I'm, you know, like I said, I kind of like to find the places where people are least likely to go. Um, and uh, we found an old logging road through an old growth uh, area. This this whole region there, there's a lot of uh, sections of old growth or, or maybe like second growth. But, you know, the fur out there is probably a good you know, average anywhere from a six to a nine foot at the stump. So, mm -hmm. you know, these are big trees, triple canopy, kind of, uh, just that, that natural beauty, uh, uh, of the area. And, um, we found another elk camp and the whole time we didn't see anybody out there. It was still too early in the season for folks to go out and start scouting for elk, you know, for the hunting season. And this region is, I think, is the only time it really sees any traffic um, are by elk hunters. And, you know, unfortunately, most of those, well, maybe fortunate for the elk, most of them nowadays <laughs> are on, you know, Road the, hunters. the whole, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They um, still, you know, missing the days of hunting from a landing or mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, you just follow the beer cans, you know, of them doing their scouting <laughs> from four-wheeler razors. But, right. uh, yeah, there there are some true stewards out there who take it serious, but uh, kind of few and far between nowadays. So, <laughs> But um, anyways, um, you know, we drove up into this area to where basically you couldn't drive anymore on this logging road and what what uh caught my eye was there was the source of a spring that eventually turned into another stream and I, I i just wanted to check out where this uh this water was coming out and we started following this uh uh logging road on foot and it's it's pretty pretty overgrown and and uh uh, so we kind of split up a little bit, uh, one of us on the road and another one, uh, cause Jack wanted to check out what kind of mushrooms and stuff were, were out there. And, uh, as I was heading to the, this spring, it was kind of crawling underneath some natural reprod and, and, uh, you know, we're, we're moving pretty close together and, uh, I just had this urge, I was, you know, thinking in my head, it's like, yeah, i got to be probably 50, maybe 100 meters or so from this, where the spring is supposed to be. And I said, hey, I said, Jack, um, I'm done. I'm headed back to the pickup. I don't, you know, I'm just not comfortable walking out here. And, you know, it may have been something from, you know, the, the previous day or something like that. And, you know, you can call me a curious cat. You know, something burns a little bit, and I'm going to see how long it burns. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, I'll just kind of keep pushing the envelope a little bit eventually. And, uh, you know, uh, that was kind of probably what I was doing that day. But we both felt that, yeah, we just didn't, we didn't need to go see this spring we just both of us were really really uncomfortable and 
you know, you spend that long time, that long a time, uh, working in small teams and combat stuff like that. Uh, you know, a lot of you got to go on your gut instinct. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of situations you got you just got to go on. You know, if you feel bad juju, then it's it's time to pot smoke, man. Otherwise, you're a goner. But um, you know, and that was that was kind of how we both felt. And uh, but after after that, uh, hadn't really had much. Uh, no ex- no experiences since then um you know i i don't it, it kind of still feels like uh like just some sour apples in my stomach that you know that but it, it it definitely helps to talk about it as just uh what when i got home uh i told my wife uh after we were up there and she just she didn't know what to think you know and she's not from the states, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, she'd heard stories uh, uh, from where she's from and stuff. But um, you know, just like folklore or what have you. Um, but she got there, start crying because how just how I looked and how I was talking to her, and I just said, "Okay, I had to just get it off my chest." Mm-hmm. So. And it it took several days of just kind of letting that process mentally, uh, and it it still has an effect today on me. Um, uh, I I go to a, a local group of uh, uh, veterans, and uh, it's chaired by clinical staff through the VA, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know we we talk about some things and how, how, uh, we're really getting through them. And I shared this and, uh, of course they kind of, um, look at you a little funny, but I was just like, I just had to share it. I just had to, to get it, you know, keep, keep releasing it. This is what I learned dealing with a lot of, uh, right. my, my, uh, uh, the things I had from my prior, prior profession. And, um, is releasing it, and then one of my uh, one of the guys that uh, sits in on this group, uh, he approached me afterwards. And he said, "You know, I've had something really similar to that," and I was just like, "Really?" Because like, I kind of felt like everybody's like, "You know, this this guy, he might, you know, you know, Oregon's a green state, so <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah, he he might, you know, he might be." slightly inebriated or something coming into here, you know, mm-hmm. uh, who knows what this, this guy's, you know, his imagination is doing. But anyways, um, he told me about his experiences. Like I, I said, dude, that's, I mean, none of it's that far apart. Um, mm-hmm. and then, uh, then I just kind of looked up Oregon Bigfoot or, you know, I was really, really interested because Jack, he started telling me about what he knew of Bigfoot and everything. And, uh, you know, I'm, I remember as growing up as a kid in the coast, you hear kind of stories about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, when you, when you live in pretty rural areas and you're growing up logging or, you know, ranching, uh, you know, a lot of the old timers would tell you stories about stuff. And it's, it's just kind of, I, I realized with a lot of the older folks here, it's just kind of, uh, yeah, it just, it just is. Kind you of know? Matter, of, matter of fact. Yeah. It, it isn't anything, uh, out of the normal, you know, something to, joke about when when you're camping or or uh you know toss around the bar or something like that over a few beers um it's just something like that but uh then i found uh uh uh, david boozer's uh his little podcast he Mm -hmm. does and i really listening to that i was like okay all right i'm i'm not the only cuckoo one out here that's that's (laughs) exactly i'm I'm all right, you know, and, uh, you know, being a veteran, I'm sure you could relate to this too, is you kind of have a different perspective on things. Right, absolutely. Uh, just life in general, and a lot of the, you know, normal people, you know, they just, you know, sometimes they just don't get it. They don't have to, you know. 
But, Correct. Um, mm-hmm. So I was listening to that, and and be quite honest, I wasn't sure, you know, who this David Boozer guy was, but I liked listening to his content, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, then I started doing some research and and listening to a lot of others, and I found yours, and then after listening to a lot of your podcasts and everything, it's like, wow, this guy's, you know, he's kind of taking it serious because I, you know, in my research, I found that, uh, you know, there's some, there's some uh, people that take things a little kind of out of the normal, I guess, or, or unfortunately the majority of them do. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'll listen entertainment reasons, but, uh, I found yours and, and your, your approach to, uh, information gathering is very factual. You know, it's uh, little is based on theory, you know, but, but facts. Right. And then, then I saw the podcast is like, Oh, there's, there's one with David Boozer. And I was like, okay, so this guy might be pretty legit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's why I contacted him. But um, you know, listening to a lot of your podcasts and everything um, about you know how these creatures they don't they don't move alone. Um, no. And looking at this area, uh, I was like, okay, the snow just melted. Uh, animals are moving a lot, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, Going back over one of my um, maps, I was looking at this area and it's like, oh man, uh, Jack and I, we just walked right through an ambush area, basically. Not That's a good we place were standing. To be. Mm-hmm. And probably no. what you heard with the, the three the, the rocks, the three uh, smashing together. Um, mm-hmm. And like I tell people, that there are others usually around especially when they're hunting, uh, probably yeah. what that was was a response to your presence, you know, alerting the others of your presence. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times it could be a yeah, scream, but... but if they scream in their hunting, it's going to alert the game animals, and they're going to be gone. So that's probably mm-hmm. an alternative type of communication. Yeah. Yeah, when we were walking out there, uh, me personally, I'm not kind of person to go out and skip and whistle in the woods and stuff. I'm, you know, I like to be aware of everything that's going on around me, mm-hmm. and even even more so now after, you know, uh, being in the military, it just it's ingrained in me. You know, I'm I'm not uh, whacking trees and and just making unnecessary noise in the woods. I, I actually like to hear what the mountain has to say. And right. um, so, and yeah, I just, I, both of us, we, we were moving relatively quiet. And when we were talking, it was just kind of, you know, quiet in between the two of us. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, listening to some of the other podcasts and everything, and I realized, because, uh, you know, in the north, uh, side of this area we we're walking through, uh, it drops off kind of abruptly, and there's a lot of big rocks and stuff along the edge. And I just thought, I was like, man, yeah, there could have been one crouched down in there, uh, or or just to the south of us in the the heavy brush and the trees and everything. Um, you know, I, I I've been. I've been back up into that area, you know, multiple times since then. I still hadn't, because uh, you, you think of, uh, you know, when you're setting up an ambush area, you want to do a very wide perimeter before you get eyes on the objective mm-hmm. area. And you don't trample on the objective area. So, you know, hindsight 2020, um, if we'd have just kind of walked out and did a loop around that that uh, uh, that heavy trail for elk, uh, yeah, it could have turned out possibly different. It's um, yeah, I never, I've never been so humbled. I love being humbled by nature, but uh, that was kind of you. You feel 
yeah, uh, it's, you can only imagine being on something else's dinner plate. I, you know, oh, yeah. but um, yeah. And anyways, when I got back, uh, I, I really didn't know who to contact and everything. So I kind of just kind of fished a little bit with, uh, some of the people I know mm-hmm. and, um, the people that a lot of the folks I know are with BLM or forest service and, and they're biologists. Um, you know, one of them I contacted, he was a biologist in that area, uh, doing owl studies for years. And anyways, uh, I called him and I, you know, kind of fished a little bit. And then he, uh, he just stopped me and he said, you're, you're talking about the big hairy ball scratcher. <laughs> and I said, I'd never heard that before, but I said, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. He said, and he just cut me off. He said, I do not want to talk over the phone about it. And he said, yeah. meet me at, over at my place. So I went over, grabbed a couple of maps and went over and talked to him and he was all ears. Um, but, as soon as uh, I told him I didn't see anything, mm-hmm. then he was just throwing excuses at me. And it's like... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, he was very closed-lipped about it. Um, just yeah. to kind of throw off. Oh, he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I remember there was some, some folks out there. They, you know, uh, go out there and, and uh, live out there for, for a couple of months at a time just doing survival stuff and, mm. you know... And, uh, and then when I told him about the trees and he's also a a veteran Vietnam area Mm -hmm. era. And, uh, I told him about the tree, the, the, that, you know, I've heard people call it knocking. It definitely wasn't knocking. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) But, uh, and they, then he just kind of listened for a little bit and he's like, oh yeah, it's like this strange woodpecker that flaps its wings on the trees and that. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I, <laughs> you I just, knew better. It's like, uh, come on, man. Uh, you're talking to me here. We, we, you know, we, we know each other uh, pretty well. And I just like, I'm, I'm not some school age kid that has a curiosity. You're just going to shun off with some, some elaborate BS about some strange woodpecker. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You know, and, uh, so before our conversation ended, he he said, yeah, please send me, send me the pictures of that bone and some of the other stuff that your buddy had found. Uh, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of of poo pooing it, but he wanted to see the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And what he did was, uh, he did a lot of owl studies and, and he was saying that, uh, most of his owl studies, of course, they're nocturnal, would have to be at night in this area. And uh, so it, it, if, if somebody may have experienced something, uh, the, as many hours or days or I don't know how long he did these studies um, for the Forest Service, because this is on Forest Service land, um, you know, I, I'm I'm sure he's bound to run into something questionable, anyways. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, we hadn't spoken much about it since then. Um, but uh, yeah, it and you know, being connected in the community here, I spoke to a couple of other people, and, and there's uh, another gal that uh, um, you know, I I know her and her husband quite well. Um, and I just kind of talking and uh, I always make kind of subtle hints of, uh, you know, you ever experience anything really weird out there you couldn't ever explain, mm-hmm. you know, and depending on their reaction, it's one thing that I'm pretty good at is reading body language and tones of voice, you know, things like that. Sure. And this gal uh, told me of an experience she had as a kid. Uh, she hinted on it. Anyway, she really didn't, she was pretty uncomfortable talking about it. And her husband's sitting right there, and he's looking at her kind of all cross-eyed. And she said, no, and she said his name and said, I hadn't spoken about this since I was a little girl. 
and um, it was up near this area as well. And and what she had, you know, she kind of hit on, and she said, I just had to tell my parents about it and, and my family, and, of course, everybody laughed at me, so... I hadn't spoken of it since, and she was trembling when she's talking about this. And mm-hmm. and then uh, another neighbor, and of course another vet, and you know, just kind of uh, uh, those that I know, you know, very well, I uh, shared it with, and it's been well received. Um, and uh, yeah, the more people you talk to around this area, it's like, damn, that's you know, a lot of I, stuff going on. Yeah, it, this is this is real, and some of these uh, ex- incidences uh, maybe a few years ago, you know. So I'd um, I, I hadn't even uh, talked to uh, David about you know other folks in the area, mm-hmm. uh, but I mean I'm just kind of uh, just kind of standoffish when it comes to that because. You know, you you don't know how serious the people take it or or what have you. But I'm uh, I'm also a a, a guide in this region. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a special use permit through the Forest Service uh, to guide in a lot of these special areas, and uh, that's you know another reason that for my anonymity anyways Mm -hmm. and i get into some pretty remote places um and just kind of exploring it because i've been back to the states for you know not too long now so uh learning these areas but you know, and I'd, I'd talked to some other folks that had been here, you know, since the Second World War, and uh, they all kind of just perk up a little bit, and it's the same thing. Once they hear that I didn't, once they know I didn't see anything, they just kind of shrug it off, mm-hmm. you know, right. but it definitely gets a few old-timers, um, uh, uh, you know, their attention anyways. And sure. you know, I, I know folks with, uh, yeah, the federal, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of federal employees, things like that. Um, you know, pretty, pretty well connected with them, uh, especially in some of these areas, uh, that I go to on a regular basis. So, um, I, I haven't really approached them. You know, I, I used to, drink that federal Kool-Aid for mm-hmm. a long time. So I, I know the uh, program. Yeah, it's definitely something you want to be careful with. Uh, and, and they're not allowed to talk oh. about a lot anyway. Yeah, and, and naturally, naturally. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, it, there's there's no judgment on my part. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, you know, part of the reason why I'm here is I, I feel that I'm a steward uh, of the land. And um, there just isn't enough stewards. Uh, everybody's out there taking. So right. if these, you know, if these critters are part of the land, then uh, you know I could really respect uh, federal agencies for you know kind of kind of just um, being unbiased or or just somewhat closed-lipped about it. But uh, because yeah, they, I mean. It's potentially a lot of big issues concerning uh, the park services and, and things like that uh, could occur, you know, sure, whether absolutely. financially or legally. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and and just liability wise, I'm really kind of uh, grateful for that because, man, he, yeah, <laughs> I just. <laughs> I couldn't imagine, and then then the mechanized outdoorsman is out there with fifty cows and everything, just trying to hunt one of these things down. So, right, uh, and that's just a bad situation altogether. Kind of ruin ruin it for a lot of us, anyways. Absolutely. But, and, and there's yeah. a lot of things you and I, I I'd like to talk to you, you know, off recording. You know, at some point we'll yeah. chat. Please, and, and I'll, uh, please. I want to send you some things to be able to, to watch for too. Okay. All right. And, and like I said, I spent a lot of time out there. Um, I have no 
absolutely no desire to, uh, uh, yeah, bump uglies with one of these guys. I, I just, I, no desire. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the stories I, I, I hear it all the time from people that they, they, they want to see one, and I tell them, you know, be careful what you wish for. Of course, you're not one of those. Um, having yeah. having ran into him when I was 16 at <laughs> close distance, and then seeing another one, you know, 14 years later, um, it's not the experience most people think they want to have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... You know, just my personal, I, I talked to my wife about it, you know, uh, off and on. And I was like, yeah, eventually I'll, I'll get a pistol just, you know, because um, drugs will take people some really crazy places, oh, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if I'm, I'm taking some other folks out with me, it's just very smart security, you it, know. It is. Yeah. And uh, so r right after that, I had... Uh, another person I was taken out into a uh, even more remote area and I was, you know, I was pretty uptight. I was asking friends, I was like, Hey, you got something I can borrow. You got something I can borrow. Take with me, you know? And, uh, fortunately I did get one and, but I was on edge for the first day, uh, out in this other area. Cause I just, it's like, I, I don't, I don't see it quite the same way anymore. It's, and, um, and there's some techniques I will tell you, that will keep you safe out there also. Yeah. Yeah. I would, uh, I, I would appreciate that really. Um, and it, as far as like, uh, research and stuff, uh, I'm out there quite a bit. And if there's some way I can be of service to, to, uh, uh, help, you know, those that, that, um, you know, really research, uh, this subject a lot more, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I would really like to help out. I would. Um, and I can not, certainly not do, I can certainly use the eyes and ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have listened to a lot of your podcasts and read some of the blogs and stuff, and and uh, I'd really like to uh, contribute in in any way I can. You know, I'm pretty well connected in the community, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm pretty pretty damn knowledgeable about this particular region and uh, a couple of other ones over on the coast that i you know areas that mm -hmm. i'd i'd like to um, talk to you offline on okay but uh you know as as far as trying to go out and get a sighting it's I, no thank you uh just just count me out i'll, I'll <laughs> i no, <laughs> I, I think somebody, uh, somebody had posted something on your your uh, uh, Facebook page about what's your ideal way of running across one of these things, and I just I read it and I just <laughs> I typed in on TV on TV exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, for years, I said it jokingly. You know, it's an underwear changing moment, but. You know, in real, uh, yeah. realistically, it kind of is. And, and I'll be honest with you, I've interviewed people who have had that happen. So, uh, and police officers that have had it happen. So, it does yeah. happen. And, it, and it, it's a real thing. I joke about it, but, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, it's not. Um, and, you know, I've had other um, people I've interviewed. Uh, one, one guy was a combat vet like yourself. And also a police officer, and he said, um, you know, when he first went to Iraq, you know, they were kind of smoking and joking in, in the vehicle, and his buddy stuck his head out and pretty much got it shot off right in front of him. So, uh, but he said, you know, running into one of these things paled that experience. So if people yeah. don't understand that this is probably the most frightening thing you can encounter it certainly is. Yeah. If, if we'd heard, well, I'll, like I said, I'll only speak to my, uh, for myself. If, um, there'd been a scream or anything like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I would have just lost everything in my pants. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd had some, I, I would have had some pretty sloshy boots running most likely. So, mm -hmm. 
Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Oh, uh, yes. I, yeah, I, I just, I have no, um, you know, and, and uh, I've heard some of your interviews where the folks get kind of a little shaky about it. And you know what? I, I, I have... I have that, uh, I caught that, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, the, uh, what everybody thinks is the common form of PTSD, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, through combat experience, but I, you know, i I'll, I'll, now I've experienced both. Um, yeah. it, it has an effect. It really does. And it's a very, very similar, I mean, it's, your brain doesn't care. It's um, it's traumatic, uh, and especially when you're in communities where most people just have no way of relating right. to it. You know, so there's, um, you know, we, we call it a military affinity with uh, all of us vets, but um, there's that an affinity, too, with people that have had similar experiences. Right. And it's... It, it does so much good to just talk about it. And, and you know? I, I've had so many people over the years. I, I've interviewed thousands of people for, geez, I, I've done this almost 46 years now. And mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a universal. It, even for myself, you know, when I first found footprints, I was 14. We didn't know what the word Bigfoot was. <laughs> family, family, family made fun of us, you know, and... Um, <laughs> Two years later, I ran into the two of the makers of those footprints. I mean, within twenty feet. Um, oh God! I <laughs> talk about the underwear changing moment. Um, yeah, I'm. You know, and yeah, and I, you had a twenty-two, right? I had a twenty-two. <clears throat> yeah, well, I wasn't expecting to run into something that weighed eight hundred plus pounds. You know, I was thinking, you know, skunk, raccoon, something, but. Uh, Naturally. So you, so you grab yeah. the appropriate tool for the job, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pew pew. I, uh, when, uh, I'm surprised you didn't laugh, but I, I'm I, you know, I, I'm one of those people though, it's like I, I'll look at a situation and, and deal with it and then have the emotions later. And that's just kind of the way I, I guess yeah. you know, we're my family mm -hmm. was sort of geared that way, but uh well, yeah, and, our, and and as human, you know, just how we're designed is in times of severe danger. There's uh, there's only instinct. The the exactly. fight. Uh, there's fight, fight, fight freeze. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, there's no time for emotions. Your brain automatically, and that I've learned this uh, going through a lot of therapy mm -hmm. um, and learning about it. It's yeah, you you are numb. Yeah, your, your brain pushes all that other stuff away, and it's just mm -hmm. basic survival. Yeah, yeah, and it's something to be said when when you're potentially you feel like you're on somebody's dinner plate, you know. Oh yeah, bullet, you know, bullets and bombs and everything. That that's one thing, you know. But this is, you know, I, I, I well, in a lot of yeah, I don't know what to say. There was. A, you know, in a lot of situations, I think we, we must think at least at some point we have some measure of control. Yeah. Where yeah. with these things, you have no control. No, no. They, I mean, I uh, used to always joke, is like, well, if Cougar wants to eat you, uh, really, really get you, then he's going to snap your neck and you won't know damn thing. Right. You know? And uh, the, these things, the, the, the size of... Um, in, come on, uh, they have evolved around us for quite a long time. Right. Um, and I suspect they're and, an older species than we are, so they've been around longer. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> just, just a tad, right. <laughs> I, you know, um, I listen to some of these heartbreaking, uh, stories that like, uh, David Polites, uh, uh, talks about um, in the national parks and stuff. Um, you know, I I I've got a three and a half year old son, and 
No, I'm. I always envisioned it, taking them out and learning some uh, survival and and uh, learning about nature and everything. Just him and I going out in the wilderness. And right. no, I'm not. I'm not going to. Uh, that's just no. It's it's not going to happen. Those have been shattered. Yeah, and Pilates, so, and Pilates doesn't realize the reality of what's going on. But that's another whole subject, <laughs> you know. And I can relate yeah. to that because I remember as a little boy. Um, you know, four or five years old, my dad taking me out, and and first thing he wanted me to be sure of was to know where the adults were all the time, and not just be some yeah. dumb little kid. And it was kind of mean the way they did it. I mean, <laughs> they pretend I wasn't there, but you know what? It gets yeah. your attention. You start. You want to make sure they know where you are, and uh, and especially growing up out in the forest. You know, I grew up mm -hmm. kind of northwest of Mount Rainier in Washington. So, um, mm -hmm. and have come face to face when I was ten with a a four hundred pound black bear. I mean, like five feet away. Thank goodness it wanted honey. <laughs> it wanted the beehives and not little kids. <laughs> so I, yeah. I've uh, I've had my experiences. <laughs> my yeah, <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> during, during the summer. Um, up in this region, there's you know a couple of waterfalls, and you get a lot of tourists from all over. And, uh, and I thought, well, you know, I've been here for you know I, I grew up in this region. Uh, besides, you know, spending you know 20 years out of out of country, but um, uh, so I had never seen this place. So I walked walked down there and looked, and uh, was talking, and then. Uh, 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 friends and I were we were just walking back and and I stopped and I could smell like that musky smell oh, and yeah. um, I was like yeah it's probably a bear a bear <laughs> a cougar I don't think a cougar would be out right now but a bear possibly you know this is uh, during that time in the summer that's that's their their get fat period so um, and lo and behold when we got back to the pickup. And we're standing there talking, and, and uh, uh, some of the there was like some college students from out of state, and uh, they looked frightened. And he come up, and he's like, "Hey, man!" Because we'd been talking uh, at this viewing area a little bit, and and uh, he's like, "Man, I got a picture of a bear," and he showed me this on the camera. And uh, it was kind of a blur. I kind of wished I'd have looked a little bit more, but I don't think it was anything other than a bear. Sure. But, um, you know, they were all rightfully, you know, scared. And, and you know, that's, uh, yeah, it, it's good that they were if they're not familiar with it. But I was like, yeah, cool, sweet, man, right on. And he looked <laughs> at me funny. He was like, so this happens? I said, yeah, dude, it, they're out here. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. It, it, they're out here, uh, but uh, uh, it's you know I told him I was like it's not to be taken lightly, but um, you do have a tendency to get used to them a little bit, and um, you know I went on to explain some of their behaviors and everything, but they're still wild animals. Um, we're on their turf, it, right. and they're unpredictable, so you just never know. So I said, don't be embarrassed about being scared, dude. That's uh, that's natural, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but they are just the big fuzzy lumbering things that, uh, you know, they make a lot of noise typically, which mm -hmm. is very fortunate. It's a good thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, their minds are usually just on food, but well, listen, yeah. We're, and, just, um, we're just about out of time. Okay. Um, I will be sending you some stuff. We'll, we'll be in touch shortly, but, um, any final thoughts before we wrap up? No, I, all I can say is just, um, you know, there's some there, there's some very uh, uh, compassionate folks out there for, you know, anybody that happens to listen to this and has a story of their own, um, just share it with like-minded folks. Um, I know from my experience uh, that there's a lot to be said about speaking to other people that can relate. So, and, it, and, it and I really... It does help a lot of people, too, and I, I say this often. Um, when somebody like you or, or myself or whoever has had an experience with these things talks about it and other people hear it, there could be as many as 20 or more people who would never talk about what they experienced because 
of a of a variety of reasons, obviously. Um, yeah. But when they hear it, and I've had I've had quite a few high, very high level professional people contact me, and and just talk about what they experienced, and it was just such a release to get it off their shoulders. Um, you know, talking to somebody who had encountered these things themselves. Um, and, and for me, that it's great to be able to do that for people to, you know, to help them, you know, say, look, you're, oh, not, yeah. the, you're not the only one, you're not crazy. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Um, yeah, yeah, you're not judging anybody. <clears throat> no, no. Uh, that's, and that's really important, I think. I, I think um, it helps just to let, just let people tell what it is they experienced. Because no people are going to experience things in exactly the same way, or maybe even the exact same situation, similar sometimes, but never exactly the same. But yeah. there are similarities, and and all the similarities, because of behavioral similarities, um, other people that have had these experiences can relate to, because they can say, oh my God, that person experienced what I experienced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a... Uh, as I was saying before, like that military affinity, you know, uh, we have a, a, a common experience uh, being in the military, combat mm-hmm. or not. It really doesn't matter. There's just that there. there's a, a bond, a language. And I, I feel the same way talking to people that uh, have had, you know, some of the uh, experiences concerning Sasquatch. It's, mm-hmm. it's like there's, there's no judgment. Right. There really isn't. You know, you both have been there and done that. There's, yeah, there is a similarity for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, and really, thank you, thank you very much for, uh, uh, yeah, just allow me to share and give some insight. Oh well, thank you for you know being willing to talk to me about this, and and like I said, I, I've got a lot of things. We'll we will we'll stay in touch and, and we'll talk again. You know, not recording because there's some things I want to share with you. Yeah, please, please do. Thanks, everyone, for joining me this week. Be sure to tune in again next week as we explore another account from a witness of the unknown.